it's inevitable that we all stumble across wanting to improve a tomorrow in our lives. But we sacrifice so much time dwelling on this desire that we fail to remember that we each hold, we each all hold the power to create our own future. Now, before I begin, can I see a raise of hands who here have been told that they must be a good role model in life? Most of my life, I grew up as an older sister. And being an older sibling meant that you were subjected to this belief of having to be this perfect, impeccable role model so that your younger, your younger siblings could look up to you and follow you to the right path in life. But here's the catch. For them, for your younger siblings to not be led astray, you also had to pave your own path in life so that they can follow. It was as if you were giving them a shortcut to life because you were already many levels ahead of them. It was as if you were their compass in life. It was as if you were their future. Ten-year-old me was just beginning to grasp this concept. Not only was I responsible for envisioning my own tomorrow, I was also responsible for creating my little sisters. Now, me and my little sister are alike in many ways, but the differences are almost obvious. I am a more reserved, driven person, whereas she is an energetic goofball. I grew up thinking that I was solely responsible for dictating my little sister's future, so I took that upon myself and tried to improve myself in many ways so that she could follow a better, refined version of me. Yet, her being the reason for my desire to improve, in turn, she has also dictated a future version of me. She has dictated my desire. That it was then that I realized that we both were playing a big role in governing, at least in some aspects, of each other's future. That was also when I re realized that I was not the only one held accountable for creating my own tomorrow. On one hand, I am a sister. On the other, I am a student indifferent from any others. Now, although I claim to be a student just like any other students out there, we differ in individuals and we flourish in variations. I didn't want to limit my speech just to my own perspective, but rather expand and explore on how other students define their own tomorrow. So I went around collecting some data. And the best way to include as much as diversity and inclusivity as possible was to interview four different individuals ranging from grade levels, genders, and how well they were doing at school. And I asked them two simple questions. How are you faring in school and what did you do to get to this point? And here are their responses. And from all these responses and scenarios, I quickly realized that we can't expect immediate result, especially if we're not doing anything. It, we can't entirely control and rule an unforeseeable future, but it is our willingness to act now that determines what we want and don't want in our future. The tomorrows we will encounter will be pronounced by the things we do today. And all it really takes is just discovering some faults in your daily routines, activities, or habits. By simply acknowledging these holes, you're slowly adding on to the knowledge of how to better refine yourself by discovering what you need to fix on. And really, all it takes is just a slight modification of these same customs, perceptions, or behaviors. Okay, let's take a step back and rewind. Okay, Scarlett, you said discovering faults and holes, but what faults and holes 
Exactly. Now, as you've probably realized, one major issue, one common issue that is associated with how to define your tomorrow is procrastination. And the reason why it's so common is because many people choose to delay their motivations, thinking that there will always be another day to initiate the change. And frankly, I am no exception to this issue. As a student, I find myself constantly struggling with this every day, taking my time for granted and prioritizing my relaxation over my responsibilities. So it essentially narrows down to this one question. How do we tackle procrastination? And why is this seemingly com common problem so prevalent yet so undiminished? Now, the first method I will recommend is remove and improve. And it is exactly as it sounds. You determine which procedures, processes, or habits have outlived their usefulness, and you assume control by eliminating things that are no longer relevant. And that's a practice called systematic abandonment. And remember, improvement is not expected to be uh, spontaneous, but rather it can be gradual and steady. What you're essentially doing is building up stepping stones to a profound result. The second method, uncertainty and change are the new normal. Now, if you want to envision and establish a better future, then as Peter Drucker once said, the best way to manage change is to create it. Now, this quote tells us how incorporating change, in the, incorporating change in the present does not mean danger, but rather an opportunity provided. Last but not least, look for and find the future. I constantly find myself asking the same questions over and over again. What if I had just done something in the past? Let me elaborate. It was the beginning of my seventh grade year where I began to have these spontaneous bursts of wanting to accomplish something. I was starting to foster motivation that was once not present. It was then that I realized that I have so many desires and wants that could have just been easily accomplished if I had taken an interest in them in my younger years. I now want to learn musical instruments. I now want to create canvas paintings. I now want to join in competitions and do so much more that could have just been easily achieved in the past. If I had started learning musical instruments back then, I would have been a seasoned player by now. If I had reached art to artists, and took art tutoring, I would have had hundreds of canvases piled up in my room. If I had joined those math competitions my parents always pestered me with, I would have had ample experience by now. If only I had taken an interest in them in my younger years, would I not grow up to lament and dwell on my present incapabilities? Instead of constantly pondering over these repetitive ifs, I realize that the future has already happened. My outlook on life shifted when I realized that we all start somewhere and time waits for no one. You can't move on to the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. I started taking the initiatives to do what I wanted, and as a result, I became a result of my own actions because I dictated what I want my future to look like. And when tomorrow doesn't look any better, there will not always be a tomorrow that is filled with happiness or joy. There will, always, there will also be countless tomorrows that are filled with unpleasant times. And here are the three P's that hinder our growth after adversity. For maintenance, you will think that this tough time will last forever. Per pervasiveness, this affects all the areas of our life. And personalization, 
This affects us and most of all other people. So how do you untackle unhappy tomorrows? Remember that everyone has crisis in life and no one can change the past. The only worthwhile question you can ask is, how are you going to get through it? How are you going to make your tomorrows and many tomorrows better? We are the habits of our yesterdays and the victors of our tomorrow. For a better tomorrow, commit to the task of today to lay the foundation of success. And as said by Rachel E. Goodrich, live today facing forward, your back on yesterday, your eyes on tomorrow, and your head and heart in the moment. What actions are delivering you tangible results? Do more of them. I'm Scarlett, and thank you for listening to my talk.